Only one has seen the movie before. Woo! All you people in the back are experiencing it for the first time? Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> yes, you guys are going to have the most fun of anybody in here tonight. <laughs> I promise. And tonight we have a very special guest with us. We have the woman without whom this movie would not exist. She did not make this movie, it would not exist. It's as simple as that to say. We have Anita Rosenberg with us here tonight. Woo! Woo! I want to thank you for coming down, and I want to know how this movie came about. I think you had a, a story that you pitched around town, or? Yeah, I'll tell you, what, by the way, th thank you, Phil, very much for calling me and having the screening. And I heard Scott, this is Scott, was responsible for uh, it, it, having the screening. I think and it's our have... good friend Scott's birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah. 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 And we have the, uh, the Modern Girls fan club is here. Jenny Day came on Woo. from San Diego. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Virginia 
Matson was sort of the hot 18, 19 year old kind of starlet that was in a lot of films. And we, I was friends also with Sarah Jessica Parker at that time. Um, and she yeah. came in and read, and, and uh, Jerry Payward didn't think she was pretty enough. So she <laughs> didn't get the part. And, um, and then also Meg Ryan came in and read, and she was just wacky. She was on a soap opera, and he didn't think she was pretty enough either. And she read the whole time with her head upside down on a chair. She was just so kooky and so fun, and it's like, but, but he hired Cindy Dibb, because she had done TV movies, and, and Daphne's and was okay. Daphne at that time was did the sure thing. So, you know, I was trying to find people that were like, that had their, their hot moment at the time, and Clayton had just come off of what, um, she's one of the guys, one of the, just one of the guys, just one of the guys, he just come off of that. So yeah, everybody had their one little, little moment. It was a really fun shoot. It was like, it was just like a giant party. We were talking earlier that all the extras in it were like real club kids. I mean, they, the, the outfits they wore, they really wore. Um, this, nobody kind of had to get bow dressed up. And it was just like having a, a nonstop party. It was, it was just a really fun movie to, to make. And maybe that's why people like it, because it seems like it was fun, because it really was fun. How involved were you once the film was in production? Well, I was an extra in every scene. <laughs> so, I mean, I was on the set, and I was there, and it was a little frustrating to me having, you know, I went to film school and had made movies, and I didn't have a lot to do on the set, so um, I cast all the extras, and, and I was an extra in every, in every scene, so maybe you guys can see me. Like, I'm on the tour bus on top, and I'm a disco dancer in black light, and in the bathroom, I got my hair all boofed up. Um, I literally am in every scene. <laughs> and that, that kept it interesting for me. So that's it. I think I, I win. I think yeah. everyone's ready to see the movie now. No, no. I, I bet we still have questions. So anyone? after you made this movie, you made a movie. Oh, you made. A well, I got to direct a movie finally. I, I directed Assault of the Killer Bimbos. Woo! So yeah. that's the movie I'm actually really proud of because it was my movie. <laughs> So maybe we'll have a screening of that coming up. And Nick Cassavetes is in that movie. He, um, it was uh, funny. I had a, um, a little kind of depart on. on oh, the go for it. So on Assault of the Killer Bimbos, what, what happened was um, we were talking earlier. Charlie had made a movie and used the title, and it just he thought, oh, I got a title that's better than the movie. So he changed that movie to call called it Hack 'em High, and he just came to me. Um, he knew who I was, and he he had known some of the short films I did and. Said I have a title for you, um, Assault of the Killer Bimbos. And honestly, I was insulted at first. I was like, I, was, I don't know where. But then, you know, I really love Russ Meyer movies, and I love Faster Pussycat Kills. So I thought if I could just Sorry. rip off the storyline of Go Go Dancers on the Run, Frame for Murder, and, and call Assault of the Killer Bimbos, I'll make this movie. So I, you know, I rented all the Roger Corman, Steamy Girl Shower movies, and, and I just tried to make it like kind of my version of those. Actually, it was on Joe Bob Briggs' Drive-In Theater after it works, and um, he was comparing how Thelma and Louise had ripped this off, and everybody's like, ah, you should sue them. But in Thelma and Louise, there were dialogue lines lifted from the bimbos and character names like Peaches and things. It was kind of a little kooky and weird, even though it was a very different. But anyway, <laughs> um, so I had a part for three server guys, like, and um, so I, I knew uh, a guy named Jamie Bozy, and he brought his friends Griffin O'Neill and Nick Cassavetes in. And um, at that time, Nick, Nick wasn't really acting too much. He certainly wasn't directing, and they had no dialogue. And I said, you cannot have these three actors who are kind of well-known, even at that time, and not let them say anything. You can't just let them drive around a car and smoke pot and have smoke coming out and not talk. So there's no dialogue and they just kind of winged it. It was really fun. They were really pretty funny. I know he, um, Nick showed up on the first day and he has dark hair and he bleached it and it turned orange. <laughs> so he kind of had this orange hair the whole, the whole shoot. And it was, that was a really fun film to do. I have uh, another question about Modern Girls. Okay. The, the music, uh, the movie's so music fueled. I was wondering if you knew the, like music selection or anything with that? You know, I had nothing to say about, you know, in the 80s it was real specific music and um, Tom Coleman, who, again, who owned Atlantic, had a gal that did all the soundtracks for him and she just, she put it together. I thought she did a really good job, actually. I was surprised at the caliber of music they got for this film, considering the budget was 
wasn't that big for the film to begin with. And I was really happy they had a soundtrack album. It was really impressive. I, I was pretty excited about it. Do we have any questions um, in the audience? Actually, I was wondering um, what your what your favorite scene is in the movie. If you have like a favorite oh my scene. God. I don't know. <laughs> Let me watch it again and then I'll answer you. <laughs> it's been a while. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't have a. I mean, the thing that was probably the most true to life in the in in the movie and in the script was that the idea. I think it's the Margot character, and she's always trying to pick. It's like looking for Mr. Right, and, and it's like if this guy, if I could, if I had this quality from this guy, and this quality from this guy, and this quality from that guy, I'd have the perfect guy. And that was kind of where I was at at that time. I was showing my scrapbook, and it's all full of ex-boyfriends that I had to do stuff on the movie, like behind the scenes and in front of the scenes. And that was kind of one of the, I guess, one of the themes that I think I most resonated with was was that idea. I'll, I'll tell you one more story though that was neat. There's a guy named there's a guy named Peter Dobson who was a yes. special extra in the movie. And what happened was I got a call from one of my old boyfriends who said, I have a friend who just moved here from New York. His name's Peter Dobson and um, would you put him in your movie? And he hadn't done anything. So I said, Well have him come down and we'll let him be an extra. And then he came down and he was the most gung-ho extra. He was in every scene and he brought all new wardrobes so he could be someone different in every scene. And so we let him be what's called a special extra, meaning we had extra camera time on him. He still didn't get to say anything because he wasn't even sad. But you know what? And soon after that, he was in The Married, the married Man with Alec Baldwin, and then he had his own TV show. It's insane. Um, I haven't seen him in a while. But I, I just, when I talk to people that come to town to want to be actors, I always tell them the Peter Dobson story because he was just so enthusiastic. He just went above and beyond the call of duty. Every day he'd show up with a whole thing of clothes behind his head, like as if he really had a real part in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> it was very cute. So maybe you'll see him as a special extra throughout the film. Any uh, more questions from the audience? <laughs> I know we must have had one. Okay. Yeah? Have you actually seen this film? Yes, actually last month it was on cable and I was flipping through the channels and I watched a little and I couldn't prove myself to watch the whole thing, I'm sorry. <laughs> You know, sometimes you listen to people that are actors and they say, oh, I haven't, I can't sit and watch my own movie. I, I don't know what it is. I'm going to watch some of it. Let's see if I can watch the whole thing. Um, I think it's that it, it was a certain moment in a certain time and you've kind of grown from there and it's kind of like you kind of cringe, like looking at it back maybe. I don't know. I can't do the bimbo either. I can't watch the whole thing that either, so. It's not just this movie, but at least I have two movies that I can't watch the whole thing. <laughs> Great. Are we done? Yeah, well, I have one last question. Yeah. What are you doing now? I am a feng shui expert. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, I've been studying Chinese metaphysics for the last 10 years, so I am a Bossy astrology master, it's Chinese astrology, and I do feng shui. So if anybody needs their, um, their shui feng, <laughs> <laughs> Show starring Gail Davis, brought to you free by Wild West Toys. Gail Davis was born in Little Rock, Arkansas in 1925. She was discovered by Gene Autry and featured in 20 of his films. <laughs>
them torpedoes, the train will be along any minute. Take it easy, Hack. If these ain't fixed just right, the engineer will never fall for the signal to stop. Come on, hurry it up. robberies, brother, and all of them since I became roadmaster. Maybe I should have stuck to being a hogger. You can't blame yourself none, Dan. You've done all you can. Looks like that isn't enough. This section is my responsibility, and I aim to see these killers stopped. Something special in mind? I need help, Buzzer, and I'm not ashamed to admit it. I want you to send a message for me. Sure, Dan. Where does the message go? And who to? To Diablo. And the party's name is Annie Oakley. Let's go. Sweet shooting, Annie. Thanks, Lofty. But I gotta keep on practicing. I don't see why. If I could shoot like that, I figure I had all the practice and I needed. If you figured that way, you wouldn't be shooting well very long. It's tired. It's a rush, Ed. Got a telegram for Annie. It's from Dan Haywood. He's in trouble. Yeah? With train robbers? He needs our help. Not our help, Tag. You're staying in Diablo. I think Lofty and I can handle this alone. We'll have to ride back into town and pick up our gear, Annie. Right. Oh, let me go with you, Annie. I'm sorry, Tag. Maybe next time. You always say that. You think I was a kid or something. No, Tag, and that's final. Now, you promise to mind and stay in Diablo until Lofty and I get back. Oh, all right. Within a minute, mister. Isn't someone around here in the habit of meeting incoming trains? Well, usually do, yeah. <laughs> Were you on that Dyson that just came in? That's right. <laughs> they come in and out all day. <laughs> Don't usually carry passengers. Well, it did this time. Where's the roadmaster? Dane Haywood, out in the back. Get him. Yeah, sure. Huh? I said get him. Yeah. Looking for something, mister? You. You're Dan Haywood, aren't you? That's right. What is it you want? First, you can tell me where the hotel is. Then we'll get things straightened out around here. The hotel's just down the street. Take my bags over to the hotel. 
You're talking like a real brass collar, son. Like you own the railroad or something. I do. And I wouldn't be here if I had employees that could take care of things right. Martin Ellison, I should have known it was you. Just like his paw always joking. Old Tom Ellison used to get me going plenty times, Buzzer. Yeah. <laughs> Let me look at you, Martin. Well, well, well. You've certainly grown up. Last time I saw you, you were no bigger than a toy train. It has been a long time, Dan. <laughs> what do you think of this boy? Just like his paw? I'm afraid I wasn't joking, Dan. Losing three payrolls inside of two months is no joke. Of course it isn't, Martin. But we can talk about that later after I get you settled out back. Same place your paw used to stay. I'll stay at the hotel, thanks. Suit yourself, son. We can start talking about the robberies right now. Take Martin's bags over to the hotel. Fix him up with a nice room. Sure, Dan. Now, about those robberies. Hi there. Can you tell us where to find Dan Haywood? You Annie Oakley? That's right. Well, Dan's inside. He'll be mighty happy to see you after what just came in on the train. Bad news? Yeah, and it's wearing a brass collar. Oh. <laughs> What's a brass collar, Annie? A brass collar is a big shot, Lofty, a railroad executive. <laughs> Come on. Nothing could be done, Martin. The men are always masked. They strike fast and disappear faster. Excuses aren't going to bring back those payrolls, Dan. I know that. And they're not going to bring back the engineer that was killed, either. Have you got a replacement for him yet? No. The job's not very popular nowadays. Won't be until after these robberies are cleared up. You've got a gold train scheduled out in two days. Who's going to throttle it? Kind of figured I would. You? Well, I don't know why not. I've been a hogger for over 30 years. When I got this job of roadmaster, I didn't lose any of the old know-how about the kettle. I came out to see that the train gets through, Dan. I'll be on it with you. I want results this time. No more excuses. That's why I've sent for help. Men who can stand up to danger don't need help. I'm afraid you've been railroading too long, Dan. Looks like this job needs a younger man. Meaning that you aim to pull the pin on me? I do just what serves the interests of the railroad, Dan. Nothing more, nothing less. You'll have to take a lot less if you expect to find a better man than Dan Haywood, mister. Annie! Hello, Dan. Lofty! How are you, Dan? <laughs> These are the folks I sent for to help in the robberies. Annie Oakley, Lofty Craig, Martin Ellison. How, are you? How do you do? You mean you expect a girl to help? This girl's special, mister. She is for certain, you'll see. I see one thing, Dan, that I should have come out here months ago. You're getting too old to use good judgment. It was the judgment of men like Dan and your father that built this railroad, Mr. Ellison. Times have changed, Miss Oakley. Progress is the word now. Ideas have changed. Meaning all rails are a little rusty, eh, hey, Martin? Business is business, Dan. I have the company to think of. We've lost a lot of money in these robberies. I know, Martin, but... You know Dan's about due for a pension, don't you? Six months more, Annie. I'm aware of that. Pensions were my father's idea, not mine. Everybody's got to pull his weight, you know. Can't run a business on sentiment. You mean you think you're firing Dan with only six months to go for a pension? What I'm thinking is no concern of yours. I go by the book all the way. And I can handle my own affairs. Why, you... Lofty, cool down. Maybe you'd like me to prove what I say, cowboy. Outside. Yeah, maybe I would. Please, no trouble. Haven't we got enough already? This won't be any trouble at all, Dan. Not at all. This might be just what young Mr. Ellison needs. I should warn you, cowboy. I was interstate boxing champion at school. Oh, thanks for telling me. <laughs> I'm real impressed. Hey, Annie. Get him. <laughs> Laugh while they're able, cowboy. Okay, Jim. Oh, I'm gonna hate to do this. Oh, hate to do just what? <laughs> Ouch, your arms make a better plan than your boastful tongue, Mr. Craig. Now you'll cruise the air. Stand still, will ya? Well, I see no point in allowing one of your crude wild blows to land. Come on, Lofty, come on. What a big one. Two just brought. <laughs> No, 
all you ever heard of you one of those fly taps. Now do I make myself clear, Mr. Ah, Craig? I got something in my eye. The only thing in your eye was my fist. Let me know when your friend wants another boxing lesson, Miss Oakley. I'll be more than happy to oblige. You don't know it, mister, but it's a good thing you turned around when you did. Tag Oakley. Well, hello, young fella. What are you doing here? You promised me you were going to stay in Diablo. I know, but I had my fingers crossed. And besides, I just had to come. Had to come? Why? And he forgot something. Just what did I forget? These handcuffs for the train robbers. You think that even if we catch the three men that have been robbing the trains, we'll be able to hold all of them with one pair of handcuffs? Pretty sad excuse, Tag. Oh, speaking of sad excuses, yours isn't very original. Something in your eye. Oh, so help me, Annie, if the truth. <laughs> You're kidding. Hey, what's going on here? <laughs> Just family secrets, Lofty. Family secret, my eye. Oh, how'd you know? <laughs> and as for you, young man, if you want to keep that secret of yours, you'd better toll the mark, or I'll wallop you till you won't be able to sit a saddle. <laughs> okay, Annie. I promise this time, but really and truly, I thought you needed these handcuffs. Well... As long as you're already here, you might as well stay. Gee, thanks. <laughs> OK. Dan, Lofty and I'd like to take a look at that spot where the last holdup took place. You going to be busy in the morning? I sure am, Annie. I sure am. Well, I got to run the engine in from the repair yard. But I can tell you just about where the spot is. The fireman said that it was just north of the 10-mile marker. Well, that's good enough. Gee, Dan, suppose I could take along with you? Oh, I sure. That's your name, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, here's where we start, Lofty. Yeah. There's the fired signal torpedoes. But the boys that put them there didn't leave us much of a trail to follow. Now, that wasn't very thoughtful of them, was it? <laughs> Come on. Sound unoriginal, Annie. This looks like the end of the trail. Well, it could be up in these rocks. Let's take a look. You go to the left, and I'll ride around to the right. All right, but I think it's a waste of time. Nobody would be up there except to maybe some mountain goats. got the stuff in my eyes. Let me see. Oh, it's alkali. It could be serious. Come on, let's go back to that stream that we just crossed, and I'll wash it out of your eyes. No, Annie, you'll get away. Don't argue with me. You could be blinded. Come on.
let the boy handle this locomotive? Why, there's no harm done, Martin. I thought Tag might enjoy it. Boy, I sure did. <laughs> what you thought could have cost the company a lot of money, Dan. Besides almost killing me. A youngster's got no business in a cab, and you know it. You ruined this suit. Gee, Dan, I'm sorry if I got you in trouble. Don't you worry, Tag. I'm afraid Mr. Ellison has got a very short memory. Meaning what? Just that you had throttle fever pretty bad, too, Martin. When you were about Tag's age, I let you do the very same thing, including turning the blow-off valve. That's before you grew up and let that brass collar go to your head, chap. Hi, Annie. Hi, Lofty. Hello, hey. Tag. Can't you see what he means, Dan? It's progress. The kids aren't kids anymore. I think what I mean is plain enough. They have no place in trying to run a business. Your father didn't figure kids that way, Martin. He knew they were the ones that would have to take over one day. Some of them even inherit the whole business. And when they do, Craig, they run it as they see fit. Or have you some clever suggestions to make? Yeah, I got one. But you wouldn't like it. Dan, I hate to do it. But as soon as I get another roadmaster out here, you're all through. You'll stay on as engineer till then. You mean you're firing him? Yes. What about Dan's pension? That's unfortunate, Miss Oakley. I can't do anything about it. Well, taking out the gold train tomorrow is probably my last trip, then. Probably. Are you certain you want to ride with me? Absolutely certain. Someone's got to stop these robberies. Doesn't look like the troops here are making any headway. I'll get my gun and meet you in the morning. Don't shoot yourself, General. You and Lofty find out anything about the train robbers, Annie? Yeah, we almost had one of them, Tag. Well, I got alkali sprayed in my eyes. What happened? A mountain goat took a shot at him. What? <laughs> Seems like my eyes are getting me into a lot of trouble these days. After we got his eyes washed out and went back, the trail had gone cold in the rocks. Maybe tomorrow those boys will warm it up for us. I hope not, Lofty. Oh, please don't worry, Dan. We're going to be on that train with you tomorrow, whether your boss wants us to or not. Sure, Dan. Besides, with Brass Collar Ellison riding along, he got nothing to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you meant that, Lofty. Gosh, we can't let Dan lose his job. No, we can't, Tag. But you just remember one thing, young man, that you're here on borrowed time. Even if you did think I really and truly needed those handcuffs. <laughs> oh, Tag. <laughs> Find out anything? Yeah, Martin Ellison, Annie Oakley, and that deputy will be riding along. So? So I don't like it. That gal's good with a gun, Hack. Yeah, when that train pulls out, they'll be laying for us. Yeah, when that train pulls out. Maybe that's it. That's what? They won't be looking for trouble until after the train pulls out. Well, look, boss, I think that we really Stop shouldn't... Stop thinking. All we got to do is pull that train out ourselves. Lock her up good, Andy. Get her ready to roll. Let's make her move. What is this? Just stand quiet. No one will get hurt. Drop that belt. Grab that throttle and get this kittle moving. Move outside this office and you're dead. Saved my life, Annie. Jumped in front of me and stopped a bullet. That's not going by the book, is it? No. No, it's not. He be all right, Dan? I'll take care of Manny.
looks like Sierra's gonna have a jail full of train robbers tonight. It sure does. You take them into town and I'll meet you at the junction. All right. Come on. I think there's a brass collar down there that's loosened up just a little. That's sure the truth, Annie. Dan hadn't pushed me aside. I'd be wearing a brass halo. I'm going back to the company office where I belong. I should have known with Dan on the job, I had nothing to worry about. I was a fool to blame him for the robberies. Thanks, Martin. Hate to see you people leave, but I sure thank you for what you did, Annie. Well, being able to help you is all the thanks we need, Dan. Sure you feel well enough to take this run out, Dan? Turn right. Old rails may be a trifle rusty, but they're still as tough as ever. When you get back, Mr. Ellison, throw that book away, will you? A long way. From now on, I'm going by the one Dad wrote. That includes your boxing style, too? No, sir. That's one book I can't lose by. Say, come to think of it, you might even become a pretty good boxer yourself. You'll take a few lessons. I never had any trouble before. And if it hadn't been for my eye, I still think I could have taken you. Well, I'd be more than happy to give you another chance. You're on. Annie, you don't mind holding my hat and coat, do you? I promise I won't hurt him too much. All right. <laughs> I just knew it couldn't happen twice. Something in my eye. Guess the hand's quicker than the eye, huh, Annie? Toys, the only manufacturer of Western toy cap guns in the USA. If you would like to shop with Wild West Toys, you can find us on the web at toyguntown.com. If you have any questions, shoot us an email.